Now, Tamaki Makoto is about to complete its first term as New Zealand's super city. Candidates are lining up with promises of change to win votes and the opportunity to represent over a million people. Also completing its first term and promising change is the controversial independent Māori statutory board, an entity we don't get to vote for, but one which will continue to influence decisions made by the New Auckland Council. But while the statutory board has made impressive gains, it continues to be criticised and, as Carmen Parra he discovers in this investigation has its own internal tensions. We are treated substandard in that we're treated as second class ratepayers. I believe there's some out there who just wouldn't want Māori at the table anyway. Love them or hate them, the independent Māori statutory board, controversially set up three years ago, doesn't need your vote to continue their work on the country's most powerful council. I've heard some people complain that we're unelected and that's undemocratic, uh, but my response to that is that uh, Parliament's the most democratic body in the country and they put us here. They created the law for it. During the Super City setup, one of the most contentious issues was whether Māori should have three recommended Auckland Council seats. The government said no, preferring an advisory board, but Māori pushed hard for a legal entity, and the independent Māori statutory board was created to assist the Auckland Council on Māori matters. I look forward to the day when seats are there and the Māori statutory board is there complementing that uh, process. The IMSB has an impressive work record in its first term, achieving all of its tasks set by Parliament. Absolutely tirelessly knocking the work over, getting in Council's uh, face in terms of making change. They've created a schedule of issues of significance for Māori, an audit on how the Council gives effect to the Treaty of Waitangi and Māori wellbeing research. The Māori plan was created from the research and strategic work priorities were established for the board and council through it. We've introduced Māori impact statements through every report, so it's in the face of the officers, it's in the face of the councillors. But it's the work on 16 of the council's 20 committees that's upset councillors and ratepayers, critical of the IMSB because representatives vote on the committees but are not elected to do so. But there are other people that sit on committees at council that aren't councillors as well. So I don't know why the attention's been toward us rather than as a whole. Are you accusing them of being racist? I would argue that they're probably misinformed more than racist. You're like, you're just, uh, tai Party admits the board will seek to be on every committee next term and warns they will use the law to extend their representation. We're also quite keen to venture down the path of non-board members being appointed by us to sit on council committees, which we can do, which is lawful for us to undertake. I think that's a step that most people would not be prepared to go to, and certainly not me. Mayor Len Brown also completes his first term, rating his council's work with the IMSB on Māori issues as a B-, minus, up from a D last year. David Taipari admits without the support of the mayor during the first term, the statutory board would have struggled in the committees. He's issued a further challenge for the mayor and the next Auckland Council. Len Brown did commit at the last election uh, that he would work to have seats on the governing body. I think we should leave it as it presently stands for maybe another two terms. He asked almost directly to you to advocate for council seats? Well, that's something that I'd like to hear from him personally. Uh, so I'm not going to debate that on camera because that's not a discussion uh, that I've specifically had with him. During the Auckland amalgamation, Mayor Brown took to the streets in protest in support of the seats and when he became mayor, said he would pursue a referendum on them. I've declared my, uh, my preference and I want to see Māori representation, particularly mana whenua representation on that council. Is that a U-turn from you? No. I'm, I mean, at that point in time, we didn't know how the independent Māori statute board would work out. And, you know, I, I've been really impressed with it. I think it's working well. We will go to a referenda in the next three years to get Māori seats uh, on the governing board.
The statutory board went through its own selection process recently. Only four of the current nine members will return for a second term, including John Tamihere and Chairman David Taipari. Both men want Māori Council seats on the agenda next term. We will advance the fact that Māori seats on the governing board occur. That has to go to a referendum. In election 2016, we will have a vote in Auckland to determine whether Māori get governing board representation uh, of the Māori role. Would you support a referendum? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm reasonably comfortable with referendum. It depends on whether or not it's fully binding. Why won't you take a position? Are you concerned about Because votes? I like the Independent Māori Statutory Board as a model, and I feel that it's working well. And, um, you know, to broaden that from Independent Māori Statutory Board as well as representation um, as standalone seats, that's, that's a further significant step, and I'm not at that place yet. <laughs> It's not a laughing matter for the statutory board. Its nine members represent 130,000 Māori living in Auckland. Seven seats represent mana whenua or 14% of Māori in Tāmaki Makoto. Two seats represent Mātāwaka or 63% of Māori with tribal links elsewhere. But an internal threat is imminent. We've got a bit of a grievance there because uh, the Mana Whenua Electoral College appoints our two Ma Tawaka reps. Uh, I'm uncomfortable with that. Ma Tawaka representative John Tamihere is challenging the selection process and is threatening an injunction to stop the new board. You must take into account Ma Tawaka views. They did not, have not, in two separate uh, appointment processes. Uh, and we, we're going to litigate that because we have to. Well, I set up that process so. Uh, I would say it's exactly right. Māori Affairs Minister Dr Peter Sharple supervises and signs off the statutory board's representative process but doesn't appoint members. Are you disappointed by the injunction? Well, I, yeah, I'd rather there was no injunction because I think the process is quite good. You know, considering what we had, what we've achieved, we did win the battle to have a statutory body as opposed to an advisory board to council. And the difference is that the statutory body has its own legislation, tu mutu hakean, and, and uh, is sitting alongside council, bringing Māori issues with it. So that's, that's a great win. In fact, it's probably better than having just people on the council. He can't help feeling a bit smug about it. It's backfired for the government. It has. It? Uh, well, I don't know whether it's backfired. We say it has brought them some joy because we believe in the council. What's your reaction to Mayor Len Brown not wanting Māori seats on the council anymore? That's not surprising because I think Len sees that he was for the seats before. Uh, at least at one stage he was. Um, but now he sees that the statutory body's in place. I guess he thinks that that's probably, that's probably better and in terms of Māori voice. Minister Sharples confirmed he will support a referendum on Auckland Council Māori seats. I would, until such time as Māoris are being elected in numbers uh, to councils, yes. I would definitely support that. I didn't know they were going to do that, but I would support that. Should all New Zealand councils have an independent Māori statutory board? I would hope Wellington will adopt this model uh, because they have large numbers of different tribes living there and uh, large, several mana whenua as well. So um, I would like to see other cities. It is really Titi Waitangi in action. Despite all the challenges ahead for the new Auckland Council and the Independent Māori Statutory Board, all admit if more Māori stood for election and voted more, there would be less need for controversial representation. Let's not talk about Māori needing to be on the governing body. Let's do something about it. The biggest danger to us in achieving that is our Māori people don't vote. Nā, hei te tekau mā rua o whiringa ānuku mutuai te wā tuku pōti kaunihera ārohe.